Hello, Rainbow. This is part two with the story of Ferdinand by Manero Leaf, drawn by Robert Lawson. This part will be without picture. I will read you the book and you have to listen. My advice to you to lay down, close your eyes and try to imagine in your head what I'm telling the story of. You can do it when you, before any activity, just as your quiet time with yourself, or you can do it before nap or before sleeping at night. Listen to the story, close your eyes, breathe slowly, and try to imagine the story in your head, like a personal video, personal movie that you are doing for yourself. So here I'm starting. The story of Ferdinand. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little boy and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little balls he lived with would run and jump and bat their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasto under the cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in, the, in its shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometime his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little balls and skip and bat your head? She would say, but Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can sit just quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the year went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. All the other balls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked at to fight at the ball fights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in a very funny hat to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest ball to fight in the ball fights in Madrid. All the other balls ran around, snoring and batting, leaping and jumping, so the men would think that they were very, very strongest and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cock tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting. And instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shed, he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a ball sat on you, what would you do? You would stink him. And that is just what the, this bee did to Ferdinand. Wow, did it hard. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snowing, patting and pawing the ground as if he was were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest ball of all. Just the one for the ball fights in Madrid. So they took him away for the ball fight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing, and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair for decoration. They had a parade into the ball ring. First came the Bendre Lois with long sharp pins with the ribbons on them to stick in the ball and make him mad. Next came the Picadores, 
who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the ball and made him madder. Then came the Metador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bore to the ladies. He had a red cap and a sword and was supposed to stick the ball last of all. Then came the ball. And you know who was, don't you? Ferdinand. They call him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all of the Bandoleros were afraid of him, and the Picadores were afraid of him, and the Matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring, and everybody shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horn around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers in all the lovely ladies' hair, and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't find, and he'd be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the Mandalores were mad, and the Picadores were madder, and the Matador was so mad, he cried because he couldn't show off with his cap and sword. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he's sitting there still, under his favorite crock tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. The end. So I hope that if you are in the beginning of the day, you will have a marvelous day and you play nicely and kindly with Adair. And if you are going to nap or going to sleep, you will have sweet, sweet dreams after this lovely story. Bye, rainbows. I love you. I miss you.